It was on that winter day that we head out to Tel Aviv to speak words about our righteous King Messiah. Join us as we jump through topics of bombs dropping in Israel, prophecies coming true and nations being wiped clean off the face of the earth, the miracles in the Israeli army that the Israeli army aren't ready to admit, and how it all comes down to an intellectual and emotional understanding of what you can do to bring about Messiah. Long live the King Messiah. My name is Yossi Adri. I'm here in Tel Aviv, the Holy Land, on this morning uh, here at the beach. So let's break it down. We're gonna we're gonna explain why somebody needs Messiah today from an intellectual perspective, from an emotional perspective. Unlike popular opinion, where people think that Messiah is going to be some big bang, and then boom, Messiah is going to be there, and things are going to change, and that's it. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be a lot more like a gradual change. So let's start with an intellectual perspective. You see a small nation, which I'm in right now, Tel Aviv, Israel, uh, the Holy Land, no doubt about that. Logically, we're looking at the world right now. You have, uh, you know, the 70 wolves surrounding Israel and they all want to bomb us and they all want to annihilate us and they've tried, it doesn't work. Um, anyone that uh, looks at the Six Day War and doesn't see that it was a miracle, yeah, 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 gotta get his glasses checked. The reason why the military in Israel has such a very good record is because they cash in on the miracles that God did for them. Just like any other army, uh, Israel has its flaws, and technically things aren't supposed to be the way they are. According to nature, there was no way. And for some reason, everything is just fine and blossoming and blooming here in the Holy Land, unlike everything around us. And throughout the world, world Jews are coming towards Israel, coming back to the Holy Land, learning more about their heritage. What does this tell us today? Logically, the only uh, outcome of this whole situation is that somebody or something is pushing that the Jewish people should be successful. And the climax of this all is the revelation of the King Messiah. Emotionally, when you see uh, other nations being wiped clean one after the other, and the Jewish people persevere, you see the Roman Empire come and go. You see all the nations come and go. Right now, you see the Arab nation in the middle of being extinct. Uh, and, and when you see this, and you see the Jewish people, and you see how God decide, oh, you guys want to kill the Jews? Okay, I'm going to arrange it. You guys kill each other. So when you see this happening, the only emotional response is, yeah, my heart is with the Jewish people. Because, because... This is the uh, emotionally you're driven towards the peace and the truth. Now, let's talk about the, the righteousness of the Jews for a moment because people like to blame the Jews for different things. The Jews are compared to a sheep and the, the nations of the world compare to 70 wolves. A sheep is not an aggressive animal, so he'll just always run away. He can be being attacked, he'll never even bite or maybe, maybe kick, maybe bite, maybe, maybe do some a sign of self-defense. But usually he's not on the attack, so he's always feeling like he's the, 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 the victim. But, uh, but the wolves, even if they're not being attacked, they're looking for someone to, to kill. So too the Jewish people. We always take the blame, we always uh, feel like, we're being, like we always allow ourselves to be seven. But not anymore because now we don't have to, because we have a promise that Messiah is in, arrival is imminent and that everything that's happening in the world is only for the Jewish people. We have a prophet and a king messiah, his name is the Lubavitch Rebbe, the Rebbe of Chabad. He said prophecy in the, in the Gulf War, that no Jews in the Holy Land will be, will be hurt in the Gulf War. And it, it came true. At that time, people thought that it was going to be a World War III, like we explained in our earlier video. 
So you see, I mean, uh, let's talk about another prophecy that the Rebbe said. The Rebbe said in the Six Day War that everything is going to be fine and God is going to show great miracles and that the Jews should just strength, strengthen themselves in the fulfillment of the commandments, like putting on tefillin, uh, which I just married it to do with one of the people here. The Jewish people strengthen themselves in the commandments and God did great miracles. But the fact is that the Rebbe said before what's going to happen, before the Yom Kippur War, the Rebbe prophesied that that was going to happen, and that's what happened. The Rebbe said, take all the kids to the, uh, to the Kotel, to the Western Wall, and they should pray with them because God listens to the prayers of children, and people didn't know what's, what the Rebbe is talking about. And then, oh, a little bit later, all of a sudden the Yom Kippur War broke out. So we have a prophet, and the Rebbe is the prophet, he is Messiah. Why is he Messiah? Because in every generation there is one person. Every generation has one person which can be Messiah, one which his righteousness is so great that when the time comes, God will come to him and reveal himself as Messiah. The Rebbe, the Rebbe uh, fulfills the criteria for from two aspects. Number one, he's from the, from the house of David, and number two, the Rebbe has done, uh, has done so much to hold up the Jewish faith, the faith right now, including the written Torah and the oral tradition, which according to Jewish law makes him Mashiach, Messiah. So according to Jewish law, the Rebbe is Messiah.